Have you thought about automation but don't want to take the step to a robot? Well, I'm here with Paul to talk about Lang's new Haubeck system. So, Paul, how does it work? Well, basically, we have the uh, table in the machine and we have the carrier. The carrier goes into the tool changer with the components inside. The, that then tool changes in, the components placed on the table, the carrier goes away and you're ready to machine. Now, one thing I think we need to make quite clear with this is you don't need no added extras as in you don't need no hydraulics or any of that sort of thing. It's simple plug and play. It is, yeah. The, the table is the receiver and the uh, carrier is the, uh, the hood. So they're the only two items you need. Bring it in, push it onto the table, rotate it round, take it away and your part is left there to machine. Now, why would somebody choose this over a robot system or a cell? Uh, it, it's relatively simple, cheap and uh, cheapish. Um, it's cheap and it, uh, it goes into the machine, uh, it just plugs into the machine. So there's no need for integration or any of that uh, additional work. And it's, it's a quick way of getting automation for somebody who isn't quite fully there with batch work. You can use this for a job that has some batch work but then it's quite easy and quite simple to take it out when you don't need it. It is, yeah. We, it, it occupies a reasonable amount of tool space, so if your tooling magazine is full, uh, it can create some problems. But we tend to, uh, to use it for a few additional hours of an evening, rather than you know, a whole night's worth of running, because the cycle times we have are not long enough. Um, but it still gives us a few additional hours. So then essentially, it's helping you make more money, because you're running, you're running unmanned, you're running lights out, and you've, you've, not need, you've not had the, the whole expense of a robot or a pallet system. So that must make it quite cost effective for just running over a few hours. It, it is, yeah. If it wasn't, we wouldn't have made the, uh, the investment, of course. But um, it, it is saving us money. That money we're converting into paying all the extra costs we've got at the moment. Um, so it's necessary right about now to get those extra machining hours to cover those additional costs and try and keep our cost basis as low as we can for the customer. And I think something else we need to talk about is just the vice you get with this. It's tiny, but it's still so powerful as it's a Lang vice. Well, it is. I mean, it's still part, it's a standard 77 mil vice uh, from the Lang range. So you get the 125 with the larger ones, but the, uh, the smaller one is 77 mil. So it's still as powerful, still got the same gripping technology on it. So it works very well. And I think something we do have to mention is them jaws aren't quite standard anymore though are they and no. so what was your reason for essentially shaving a bit off the top well the the, uh, the whole justification for this was to get the component in there that uh, that we've loaded in running but it's slightly too tall uh, in in the transition from when we started the exercise to getting to this point we've added some height to it and we just couldn't get it into the halbex so uh, we've actually had to shave a bit off of the vice uh, to allow us to get it in. But, you know, it still does the job, it's still working hard and, and holding on to the part and it fits inside the hood as we need it to. And this part actually goes through quite a few operations, so I just want to have a, a, a quick talk about the stamping machine you've got from Lang because you're not just using the stamping machine to obviously stamp and to grip it, you're using that for a datum as well. Yeah, it's our work datum, so every operation after the first operation that we do is then located and relocated with heat treatment operations and other machining operations in between. So we continue to use that, hence the tag, that the uh, extra tag that's on there. That remains all the way through until we wire it off at the end. And I think that's great. So you stamp the billet to start with. Obviously the billet gets then machined. It then goes out for heat treatment, it comes back, gets machined again, yep. goes out for heat treatment again, comes back, and that part you know is going to be in the exact same place every single time, yep. just from the stamping technology from the vice, and also, that must make it nice for the Halbeck as well, because it's always gripping in the same place. But effectively, yeah. Yeah, it uses the same grip every single time. So all we have to do is make sure we load it based on the, uh, the index mark that's put in the middle, and it will always be in the same place. We do probe, you know, it's a five axis machine, so we probe to make sure it's, uh, you know, within a few microns of where we need it to be, but that's all we do, and then we machine. Now, last question, I promise. As now you've seen quite a significant increase in 
production, thanks to the Halbeck, will you be getting more of them? Uh, yes, we will. Um, we, we're only running for a limited amount of hours, as I say, and the component size has to fit the envelope of the Halbex. Uh, but we've got a few parts that we can get in there, so it gives us the opportunity of lights out running. So as long as we can balance the tool uh, magazine with the number of Halbex uh, hoods we've got in there, then we'll get as many in there as we can. Mm -hmm.